This is a Friday Shoes production. Our target today, I can solve simple addition and subtraction equations. Lesson 1, 9 in the book, page 65. Solving addition and subtraction equations. Remember what an equation is. It's a math sentence stating that two expressions are equal, either numeric or algebraic. Take a look at the key concept here, subtraction property of equality. Basically saying, if you subtract the same number from each side of an equation, the two sides remain equal. I'm guessing you kind of know this. Equations are just like balances. And there's a middle, which is the equal sign. And on the left and the right, those things are equal. So notice they have 7 here. Obviously, 7 equals 7. And notice if they take away 3 from one side and take away 3 from the other side, everything stays equal. 4 equals 4. Same with algebra. Take a look at it. It's more abstract this way. You have something on the left and you have something on the right and you have the equal signs in the middle. Well, guess what? Those two things are equal. X plus 4 is equal to 6. And think of it as a balance. Now, if we take away the 4 from one side, we can take away it from the other side and things should be equal. Just like it was on the other side, right? Well, if you do that, plus 4 minus 4 equals 0. And then X is left over. Think of it sitting on the balance. You took away the plus 4 that was sitting there with this minus 4. You took it away. Now x is left. On the right side, you got to do the same thing. So you took away the 4, and there's 2 left. So there you go. On the left side, you have x. On the right side, you have 2. x is equal to 2. Let's take a look at how they show it in the book here. It says solve x plus 5 equals 3. Check your solution. I'd like to show you the vertical method, which I, I use in class exclusively, and I'm going to have you use. I like to draw lines. I call them train tracks or slide. But you look on the left side, you have x plus 5. Well, obviously, they want to isolate the variable. That's what the study tip says. You want to get x by itself. So you want to get rid of this plus 5. Well, how do you get rid of a plus 5? You minus it. Minus away 5. Well, if you do it on one side, you have to do it on the other side, just like a balance, or else things won't be equal anymore. When you do take away the 5, notice that becomes gone. And you have x on the left side, and you have 3 minus 5 on the right side, which we have at negative 2. So the answer is x equals negative 2. That's the vertical method. Horizontal method, similar, except you notice that they put the subtraction of 5 in one line. You still have plus 5 minus 5, and they still have 3 minus 5. And the solution is x is equal to negative 2. Keep in mind, though, we'd like to check our answers each time. So when you're done doing these, you can go back and plug your number that you think it is, negative 2 in this case, into the problem. Notice what they did. They took the x out, plugged in negative 2. Negative 2 plus 5 is equal to 3. Is that true? Sure is. So it checks out. How about you stop the video here and try these three problems, come back and see how you did. This says solve each equation. Check your solution. Let's look at the first one. 8 plus 6 is equal to 2. I'm going to draw my train tracks to keep the middle of the balance so I know where this is and also I can keep uh, things organized. So we have 8 plus 6 is equal to 2. I want to get A by itself. So how do I get rid of that plus 6? Well, I take it away. Take away 6 from this side. And if you really think of it as a balance and you're taking away something, it's now gone. Well, plus 6 minus 6 equals 0. We're left with this A, though, sitting there. And we subtracted 6 from the left side. We've got to do that from the right side. So we have 2 minus 6 over here. Well, what's 2 minus 6? Oh, I remember. That's 2 plus negative 6. And then we have the negative 6 winning out, so the answer will be negative, and you subtract the two absolute values, it's negative 4. Put the equal sign down in the middle, and there you go, a is equal to negative 4. How about the second one? y plus 3 is equal to negative 8. Now you might think of it this way, something, which is what I'm calling y, something plus 3 is equal to negative 8, and we're going to find out what that is. And again, we draw our train tracks just to keep the center and things organized. So we have a left side and a right side. 
All right, so what are we going to do to this left side to get y by itself? Well, we have pl they took y and they added 3 to it. Well, let's take away 3 and we'll get back to what we have for y. Kind of like undoing what they did. This becomes 0. That's why we have y down there. It goes away. And then we also have to do the exact same thing on the other side. I'm subtracting 3 on this side. So now I have negative 8 minus 3. Hmm. Negative 8 minus 3. A lot of you had problems with this on the quiz. What is that actually? Well, remember, keep, change, flip. So I'm going to keep the negative 8, change the subtraction to addition, and flip the 3 to its opposite. And then simply just add the number parts. I see that I have two negatives, so I know the answer is going to be negative, and then 8 plus 3 is 11. There it is, negative 11. So y is equal to negative 11. Does that check out? Let me find out. Negative 11, I'm going to plug it back into the original problem. Is negative 11 plus 3 equal to negative 8? It sure is. How about this last one over here? All right, we've got 5 equals n plus 4. All right. Well, I notice the n's on the right side. That's okay. Just start over there. We're going to get n by itself. Well, they added 4 to it, so let's take away 4. When we take away 4 with the plus 4, that'll end up just leaving n by itself over on this side. Have your equal sign. Remember now, you took away 4 from the right side. you got to take away from the left side. 5 minus 4 is 1. That is what n equals. I could switch it around in the end. That's called the reflexive property, in case you're wondering. All right. Let's look at the next piece of information here. Because addition and subtraction are called inverse operations because they undo each other. For this reason, you can use the addition property of equality to solve subtraction equations just like x minus 7 equals negative 5. And you notice in here on the key counts that they basically are saying, all right, what, what, what if we added numbers to both sides? If they're the same, doesn't change. Everything stays equal. Now, Notice here in the algebra side, the same thing. They have x minus 5 and 6 being equal. Great. Well, if you add 5 to the left side and add 5 to the right side, this becomes 0. And now you have x here. And you have 6 plus 5, which is 11. And you can check that that is correct. 11 minus 5 is 6. Let's solve an addition equation with a word problem. And we'll get to the easier ones, actually. It says two angles are supplementary if the sum of their measures is 180 degrees. The two angles shown are supplementary. Write and solve an equation to find the measure of angle X. So they're trying to, we're trying to figure out this angle right here. What is that? Well, they tell us that both of these angles are, one, are supplementary, which means they add up to 180 degrees. That means sum. That means the answer to the addition problem of 94 plus this angle equals that right there, 180 degrees. Both those put together make 180 degrees. Well, let's take a look at how they put it together with the words. It says the sum of the measures is 180 degrees. We're going to let x represent the measure of the angle x. So they're actually saying this is going to be the value. x is equal to whatever this is. And, well, we take the two angles, the x and the 94 that I have circled. We add them up, and it should equal 180 degrees. And that's how they come up with that equation. Of course, to solve it, they're going to subtract 94 from both sides to get the x by itself. Notice they use the horizontal method. And they get x is equal to 86 degrees. So this angle over here is 86 degrees. 86 plus 94 is 180 degrees. All right, let's look at simpler ones without having to read through a word problem here. So solve negative 6 equals y minus 7. Watch me as I solve this one. I'm going to do it two ways. First of all, I'll do it with the y over on the right side. People like to have the y on the left side, so we'll do that secondly. When we do that, all you do is literally put whatever's on the right side on the left side and vice versa. Take the left side, put it on the right side. Don't change any position. Just literally write 
exactly what you see, especially when it's subtraction, because subtraction is not commutative. All right, so here we are on the first one. We're over here. Let's work this one down. I'm going to draw my train tracks down so I can separate and keep organized my left and right side. I want to get Y by itself. Isolate Y, have it by itself. So I need to look at what they did. They had Y minus 7. Well, they did, they, they subtracted 7 from Y. So I want to do the inverse operation of that. I want to add 7. And I do it to both sides. When I do that, this minus 7 and plus 7 cancel each other out or undo each other is what they said. And you're left with Y. You could say it equals zero. Negative seven plus seven, zero. So you have y over there. That's your equal sign. Then you have negative six plus seven. Well, what is negative six plus seven? Well, that's going to be one. So one is equal to y. You can switch it around at the end if you like. Y is equal to one. Same thing over here on the left side. I'm going to draw my train tracks just like I'll have you do in class. And then y minus seven. It's equal to negative 6, I still add 7 to both sides. When I do that, this disappears and we're left with y. And the negative 6 plus 7, that's going to equal to 1 again. So y is equal to 1. How about you try these last three? First one, x minus 8 is equal to negative 3. I'll do it as quickly as possible so you can see how I do it in, in, in standard form here. Quick. X minus 8 is equal to negative 3. So what am I going to do? Well, i got to get X by itself. So I have to do the inverse operation of minus 8, which is plus 8. So I'll do it to both sides. When I add 8 with this negative 8, it goes away. Left with X is the only thing on the left side of the balance or the equal, equation. Negative 3 plus 8, when I do that, negative 3 plus 8... What do I get there? That's going to be 5. Now, if I'm not sure if that's correct, I have to go back and check. So I'm going to go back and check this one. Ch take my 5 and plug it in. So if I take 5 and I plug it into the math problem, so I got 5, original was minus 8. Does that equal negative 3? Well, it sure does. It sure does. Let's take a look at the second one. Draw my train tracks. I see that they have b minus 4 is equal to negative 10. Well, I'm going to do the inverse operation of minus 4. I'm going to add 4 to both sides. When I add 4 to that negative 4, it goes away, leaving you with b. b is equal to whatever 10, negative 10 plus 4 is. Well, I know that's negative 6. I've been practicing my math for a long time. So let's do this. Take this negative 6 and see if that's correct. Is that the right answer? Plug it in. Well, let's see here. Negative 6 minus 4, does that equal negative 10? Yes, it does. When I do my keep change flip, you can see it right there. And the last one, train tracks. They have to pee on the right side. Don't let that confuse you. It doesn't matter what side it is. You can switch it around. Let's do that. Let's switch it around. P minus 12 is equal to 7. All right. Now we have that minus 12 we want to get rid of so we can get P by itself. So let's add 12 since that the, that's the inverse operation. That goes to 0, leaving only the P left over on the left side. Hey, that's what we want. We want P equals then a number. 7 plus 12, 19. There it is. You can check it on your own, but it does work. Don't forget, you can always watch this video again or read the examples in the book or take a look at some of the personal tutor videos in the online textbook. And as usual, this has been a Friday Shoes production.